breaking news. Malaysia Airlines confirms it has lost contact with a plane carrying 227 passengers. It seems to have vanished into the net. What do we tell the family members? What do we tell the media? The Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, one of the greatest aviation mysteries. The Boeing 777 airliner carrying 239 people vanished on a routine flight to Beijing. It's been exactly 10 years since the world's greatest aviation mystery that destabilized families and confused even experts happened. Since then, experts from over 12 countries of the world have been searching tirelessly for an answer on what exactly happened to the crafts, and most importantly, the location. All of this seemed futile until recently, just when all hope was lost and the chapter was about to be closed for good, an aerospace engineer came up with evidence of its true location, further bringing hope to the families involved and putting an end to this decade-long mystery. How was this discovery made, and why was it so hard to find until now? Join us on this exhilarating journey. March 8, 2014 marked a pivotal moment in aviation history. Never in history have 239 people been declared dead on the basis of mathematics alone. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, a Boeing 777, embarked on a routine journey destined for Beijing, China. However, in a twist that would captivate the world, the aircraft mysteriously disappeared from radar screens just 38 minutes after takeoff, leaving behind a haunting void of unanswered questions. For four long years, Investigators pursued every lead, but despite their professional efforts to uncover the mystery behind its disappearance, the plane's fate remained a complete enigma. That is, until recently, when after the back and forth of theories and speculations, there seems to have been a breakthrough in this case, as a scientist has recently unraveled a shocking truth about its precise location. Nevertheless, before delving into how this remarkable discovery was achieved, let's first rewind and revisit how this perplexing mystery initially unfolded. Possibly, by understanding the sequence of events leading up to the present, we can better appreciate the significance of this potential breakthrough. It was just after midnight on that fateful day when Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 began preparations for takeoff from Kuala Lumpur International Airport on a routine six-hour flight to Beijing. Leading the experienced flight crew was 53-year-old Captain Zahari, a seasoned pilot with over 18,000 hours of flight time under his belt. Joining him in the cockpit was First Officer Fark, a younger co-pilot who was using this trip as a valuable training opportunity to gain more experience. In addition to the flight crew were 10 flights and 227 passengers from China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, India, France, the United States, Iran, Ukraine, Canada, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Russia, and Taiwan. Among them were five young children, all excited for the adventure that lay ahead. As the massive plane thundered down the runway and lifted off into the dark night sky, no one on board could have predicted the captivating mystery that was about to unfold. Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing. Everything seemed to be going according to plan as the aircraft climbed to its cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. The crew dutifully checked in with air traffic control in Kuala Lumpur, exchanging the usual pleasantries before handing over to their Vietnamese counterparts. But that's when the unthinkable happened. Just as Flight 370 was about to enter Vietnamese airspace, it simply vanished from the radar leaving the air traffic controllers completely clueless about the aircraft's whereabouts. And so began the search for answers. A search that would captivate the world and last for years. What happened to Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 and the 239 people on board? Was it a catastrophic mechanical failure or something more sinister? The mystery only deepened with each passing year, as search teams scoured the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, but found no trace of the missing plane. The story only gets weirder and more mysterious from there. You see, before the aircraft vanished, there were no reports of any emergency signals being sent out, nor any indication that the weather or the plane's systems were acting up. Then, around 1.30 in the morning, something unexpected happened. Both the military and civilian aviation body watching the radar in Malaysia spotted the plane again. But something was clearly off. The aircraft wasn't where it was supposed to be. 
It had turned around and started heading back the way it came. But that wasn't the end of its strange maneuvers. It then flew southwest across the Malayan Peninsula before changing direction once more and heading northwest over the Strait of Malacca. Nobody has any idea why the plane did these. Again, the question of, was there a mechanical problem? And, did someone intentionally alter the course? Re-echoed in the minds of SL concerned. The questions just keep piling up, with no clear answers in sight. To make matters even more confusing, another pilot tried to reach Flight 370 on an emergency frequency, hoping to get a message through from the Vietnamese air traffic controllers. But all they heard was muffled static, leaving everyone even more puzzled and unsettled to this very day. Then, in the early hours, at about 2.22 a.m., the Malaysian aviation authorities suddenly lost track of the airplane over a mysterious and deep place called the Andaman Sea, a terrific sign that something bad might have happened. Things only got scarier from there. At 2.40 a.m., the air traffic controllers responsible for monitoring the aircraft had some shocking news. They reached out to Malaysia Airlines and delivered the news nobody wanted to hear. Flight 370 had vanished from their radar. It has been 10 years since Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared. They simply couldn't see it anymore. Hearing this, the airline immediately grew worried and sprang into action, launching a frantic search to find the missing plane. They reached out to everyone they could think of who might be able to help. Other air traffic controllers, nearby airplanes, and anyone who might have a clue about where Flight 370 could be. By the time the sun began to rise at 5.30 a.m., the search had become even more intense, with rescuers concentrating their efforts on the last known locations, the South China Sea and the Gulf of Thailand. There was a huge push to uncover any information about where the plane had gone. After the aircraft disappeared off the radar, the story quickly became a major topic across news outlets around the world. Everyone was desperate to understand what had happened and where the plane, along with its 239 passengers and crew, had vanished. In the immediate aftermath of the plane's disappearance on March 8, 2014, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, AMSA, took the lead in coordinating the search and rescue efforts. They were supported by the Australian Defence Force, as well as 22 military aircraft and 19 ships from eight different countries, including the United States, China, and the United Kingdom. Then, on March 17, 2014, Malaysia requested that Australia assume responsibility for the search, which had by that point shifted its focus to the southern Indian Ocean. The operation transitioned from search and rescue to search and recovery on March 24. The underwater search, led by the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, ATSB, officially commenced on May 5, 2014, covering an area of 60,000 square kilometers in the southern Indian Ocean. Despite these massive multinational efforts, the underwater search concluded on January 17, 2017, and was unsuccessful in locating the missing aircraft. In the meantime, on January 29, 2015, Malaysia had formally declared MH370 an accident. Malaysia has officially declared the loss of flight MH370 was an accident and all on board are dead. The search area was then expanded from 60,000 to 120,000 square kilometers, and the first piece of confirmed debris from the plane, a flaperone, was recovered on Reunion Island in July 2015. Additional debris was found along the east coast of Africa between 2015 and 2016. However, the main wreckage of the aircraft, including the critical flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder, was nowhere to be found. On May 29, 2018, Malaysia announced that the second search operation had also come to an end without locating the missing plane. The final safety investigation report, released on July 31, 2018, acknowledged that the cause of the disappearance could not be determined due to the lack of physical evidence. So everyone fell back to base leaving the families of the victims and the global aviation community grappling with unanswered questions and an enduring tragedy. But this can't possibly be the end of the road for this case. Was a critical lead found? Let's find out together. What could have happened to the MH370? Despite all the information that's come to light over the years, 
The mysterious disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 remains one of the most perplexing aviation puzzles of our time. The endless search efforts have only fueled more questions than answers, leaving us grasping at various theories, each one more confusing and head-turning than the last. One of the theories that has been seriously considered by both the Malaysian government and the Australian Transport Safety Bureau centers around the idea of oxygen deprivation. This theory proposes a deliberate hijacking where someone tampered with the oxygen supply or a mechanical issue that affected the plane's oxygen levels, which resulted in the passengers, crew, and even the captain Zahari Ahmad Shah became unconscious, disoriented, and ultimately incapacitated. Hypoxia can set in when the body doesn't get enough oxygen. They would have died most likely from hypoxia. That's to say, they would have died from lack of oxygen. According to this theory, that's exactly what happened to the passengers and crew of MH370. Without any conscious individuals at the controls, the plane would have simply continued on its programmed course toward Beijing, unable to be redirected. But skeptics don't think this was the case. According to them, if everyone on the plane was indeed rendered unconscious, one might expect the aircraft to have flown on until it ran out of fuel, potentially reaching areas far beyond its intended destination. The fact that it disappeared from radar altogether suggests there may have been other, more sinister factors at play. Then came the Canadian aviation expert and former crash investigator Larry Vance, who with all amount of certainty asserted that it was a pure case of murder-suicide by either the captor or first officer. Vance and his team closely examined photos of the recovered plane wreckage, focusing on the flaperon and a section of the right-wing flap. They noticed the flaps were extended when the plane hit the water, suggesting a controlled, low-speed crash landing. Based on this, Vance thinks someone on board deliberately deployed the flaps to intentionally bring the plane down. Another interesting theory regarding the mysterious disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 was speculated by a former pilot, Christopher Goodfellow. According to him, the plane might have experienced an electrical fire on board, and this fire could have forced the plane to turn back towards Malaysia in search of an emergency landing strip. Goodfellow further suggested that the aircraft would have continued flying on autopilot as the fire likely incapacitated the crew and passengers. Now, here's where things get really intriguing. Goodfellow's theory gained some support when different people showed up, claiming to have witnessed a burning airplane in the sky. First was a New Zealand man working on an oil rig off the coast of Vietnam who reported seeing a burning object in the sky, which he believed to be the ill-fated Malaysia Airlines flight. He described the plane as burning at a high altitude, and he observed it for about 10, 15 seconds before the flames went out. Based on his report, the Vietnamese authorities even dispatched aircraft to search for the plane, but sadly, the search yielded no results. To lend credence to his claims, a British woman who was sailing in the Indian Ocean claimed to have spotted a flaming object in the night sky, which she believed to be the missing Malaysia Airlines jet. According to her, the object appeared to be a plane on fire with orange lights and black smoke streaming from behind it. Interestingly, she also mentioned seeing two other nearby planes, assuming they would have reported any distressed jet. But this was not enough to substantiate the theory as almost immediately. Another pilot, Patrick Smith, openly gave a counter theory. Smith argued that it would have been highly unlikely for the plane to travel for hours on autopilot after a fire broke out. Additionally, the aircraft turned back for a second time after initially heading towards Malaysia, which further complicates the matter. In 2015, Smith told Business Insider that the nature of the debris found might suggest that the airline was under control when it crashed, contradicting the theory of an uncontrolled fire on board. According to him, the plane might have landed softly on the water and mostly stayed intact before sinking. This was supported by experts who said before that this idea matches the debris that was discovered. This suggests that the plane either had a low-impact crash or intentionally landed smoothly in the ocean. Another theory suggests that the search teams have been looking in the wrong place entirely. According to this theory, investigators should have been searching north of Malaysia instead of near Australia. The idea is that maybe the plane crashed or even landed somewhere and was intentionally hidden. 
However, this theory was completely shut down by Inmarsat, the British company that owned and operated the satellite that was tracking MH370. One of the more bizarre theories that emerged in the aftermath of the baffling disappearance revolved around the cargo the plane was carrying. A consignment of lithium-ion batteries weighing 221 kilograms, along with 5 tons of mangosteens, a tropical fruit. Some speculated that this peculiar combination of batteries and fruit could have somehow mixed together and caused a catastrophic fire or explosion on board. However, Malaysian government investigators were quick to dismiss such theories as highly improbable. Their report indicated that the batteries and fruit cargo were properly packaged and stored separately in the plane's hold, making any dangerous interaction between the two virtually impossible. Furthermore, the lithium-ion batteries had undergone the requisite inspections and customs clearance before being loaded, confirming they were safe for air transportation. Leaving no stone unturned, Malaysia's Science and Technology Research Institute for Defense conducted tests specifically examining whether the batteries and mangosteens could have been factors in MH370's disappearance. Their conclusive findings were that there was no way this cargo could have caused or contributed to the incident in any way. There were also claims by Malaysia's former Prime Minister, Mahathir Mohamad, that the plane was taken over remotely to prevent a hijacking. But the claim was dismissed as no technology on the aircraft would allow someone to remotely take control from the pilots. The story gets more fascinating from this point. So, get ready to be thrown off balance with the following details. There were also claims that North Korea was somehow involved and took control of the plane. However, the investigators found zero credible evidence linking North Korea to this incident. No group ever claimed responsibility. As if that wasn't enough, an author, Nigel Cawthorn, in one of his books about the mystery disappearance, came up with really wild claims that the U.S. military shot down MH370 during a training exercise with Thailand and then covered the whole thing up by misdirecting the search efforts. But here's where things got a bit confusing. On that plane, there were two passengers with stolen passports on board. Today, we have uncovered two passengers which uh, was traveling on a stolen passport. Though Malaysian aviation claimed their purpose of travel was to seek asylum, it still sounds unconvincing and even makes the theory of hijack very plausible. And we'll tell you why. So here's what happened. Five seconds after the aircraft flew past a point called Igari, something strange occurred. The part of the transponder that provides extra information, known as the Mode S functionality, was suddenly switched off. You know what's alarming? The only way to do that is by turning the transponder knob in the cockpit from TA ray to the altitude off position. If it were a technical malfunction, all signals would have disappeared immediately. But in this case, it took another 37 seconds for the secondary radar return to vanish completely. And as it did, the aircraft abruptly stopped following its planned route. The primary radar recorded a turn, and what it showed was mind-boggling. After initially turning right towards a point called BTOD, the aircraft made a sharp, almost 180-degree left turn instead. Boeing tried to replicate this turn in a simulator, but they couldn't match up the turn and timings perfectly. The only simulation that came close involved a manually flown turn, meaning the autopilot must have been disconnected. Now you might be wondering, why disengage the autopilot? Well, let me tell you. The autopilot only allows certain bank angles, but this turn was so tight that a much steeper bank must have been used, at least partially, throughout the turn to accomplish it. So, the reasonable conclusion is that someone had started interfering with the flight's direction on purpose. If that wasn't convincing, wait, there's more. The timing and position of where all this took place seem far from random. Igari was the point just before the boundary between Malaysia and Vietnam's airspace. The Malaysian controller had handed over the aircraft and probably didn't monitor it too closely. At the same time, the new Vietnamese controller would likely wait for the aircraft to call before paying much attention. Talk about a perfect opportunity to initiate this maneuver and avoid detection. And here's where it gets even more intriguing. Just north of Igari, Thailand has an air defense identification zone. This military monitors any traffic entering that zone unless it's properly identified, has a working transponder, and follows a filed flight plan. By carefully avoiding that zone, 
whoever was now in control, would also avoid direct scrutiny from the Thai military. And given the direction the aircraft was turning, anyone looking at the primary radar would assume it was just diverting under Malaysian control. This turn would also position the aircraft between that Thai zone and Airway M765, avoiding any opposite traffic. It's clear that whoever was now in control was likely very well versed with the airspace structure over this particular area, and this was likely carefully planned out. But now, the terrifying question we will never have an answer to is who was that person? Even though the person may never be found, an aviation scientist's latest discovery just provided a groundbreaking breakthrough to this long-standing mystery, further strengthening our faith that all hope is not lost after all. What recent discovery was made in this case? We know you're itching to hear this, we all are, so sit tight because the situation is about to be turned for the better, and after these long years we can finally rest from the fright, confusion, and this case has plunged us into. After attempts to recover it from the coasts by tracking the black box which was beeping failed, despite the fact that the noise matched the data from a satellite company, Inmarsat, a satellite company, all hope was lost, and everyone, including the affected families, was hoping for a miracle. That miracle actually did happen when an aero scientist, Richard Godfrey, started exploring the possibility of using something called the WSPR database, along with some clever algorithms, to look for anomalies in multiple radio transmissions simultaneously. Now, WSPR is a protocol for low-power radio transmissions that helps explore how signals at different frequencies propagate over long distances and Taylor designed some computer software to analyze these signals. Here's the cool part. When these signals travel over vast distances, they sometimes scatter when they hit obstacles in their path, and this causes tiny anomalies in the signal strength. Now, originally, WSPR wasn't meant to be used for tracking aircraft, and no one really thought it was possible. But in a situation like this, trying the impossible is not out of the question, and that's exactly what Richard Godfrey set out to do. Theoretically speaking, if you know the exact location of the transmitter and the receiver, the time of day, and about a million other factors, there might be a possibility to use tiny concurrent anomalies in several of these signals to track something like an aircraft. And the really cool thing is that this technology samples thousands of signals every two minutes, which could potentially give us much more information than we previously had. Godfrey understood this, and so he and his colleagues, Dr. Hannes Koetzi and Professor Simon Maskell, tried to analyze this database to try and find traces of MH370, and boy did they make headway. Apparently, MH370 had a WSPR transmitter on board that was sending signals every hour until it ran out of fuel. The team used these signals to reconstruct the flight path of MH370 and found 67 positions for the plane over the 6 hours and 27 minutes of flight from its last known radar position. What blew the minds of many was that they were able to pinpoint the exact location of the crash site, which was 29.128 degrees S, 99.934 degrees E, which is around 842 nautical miles or 1,560 kilometers from Perth, which surprisingly aligns perfectly with previous analyses by Boeing, Inmarsat, and the drift analysis of the MH370 floating debris. Without being insensitive, we could say the timing of this discovery is almost perfect, as it is at the same time a US company, Ocean Infinity, after a previous failed attempt, approached Malaysia Airlines requesting to reopen the search for the plane, having improved their technology and analyzed enough data to narrow down their search. And at the same time, the same period the Malaysian government pledged to reopen the search if tangible evidence is provided. Do you think this mystery will finally be solved? Let's hear your thoughts on this latest development in the comments section. Thank you for watching and keep an eye on this channel for more updates on this case. For now, remain optimistic.